In this week's drive, we tuck into the draft at Indy, stop for a splash and dash, slide for national glory, and scare a cameraman. All this and more in this week's Drive. We start with IRL qualifying at Sparta, Kentucky, where 21-year-old Sarah Fisher became the first woman in American racing to take a major pole position. Everybody asks me, what, what, what's Kentucky about? Why, why do you do so well? I don't know. I think it's just, it fits my driving style to the T. Uh, there's no other place that I can get around with smoother. Fisher, in her fourth year of racing, lapped the 1.5-mile trioval at a record 354 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, over in Europe, the DTM series moved to the Nürburgring in Germany with round seven of the 10-race German Touring Car Championship. Audi's championship leader, Laurent Aiello, was the favorite going into the race, but it was Mercedes-Benz star Uwe Altsen who made the best start. He grabbed first place ahead of Aiello and his teammate Christian Apt going into the first corner. Ex-Formula One star Jean Alesi spun off the track as he clipped Alain Menu's Opel, and both drivers crashed out of the race. That chaos at the first turn let Altsen and Aiello pull further ahead of the rest of the field, and they battled out the lead. The two drivers were never closer than when they pitted on lap nine, Aiello almost pushing Altsen's black car down the pit lane, followed by Schneider's silver Mercedes. But Altsen's stop was much quicker, and he gained 1.3 seconds advantage over his French rival. Aiello caught up quickly, but Schneider, up to third by the end of the pit stops, was blocked by Aiello's teammate, Matthias Ekstrom, who had left his stop very late. Although the trio harried each other, no one completed a pass, so the order remained the same all the way to the flag. Altsen won by three-tenths of a second, with Schneider a further three-tenths behind the Audi. Aiello leads Schneider by 24 points in the championship with just three races to go. The next race is at the A1 ring in Austria in September. The Ass cars raced over two heats at Rockingham in England, and Darren Turner made it a clean sweep, winning both races at the new purpose-built oval track, the only one in the UK. 46 laps into the first heat, and Turner, a test driver for Formula One team McLaren, passes Kelvin Burt for second place. Eight laps later, he passes Nicholas Maniason for the lead. Before the round, Turner was 14th in the title. He started from pole and after one lap was down to fourth, but fought back to win from Maniason and John Mickle. Race two started badly with a tap and a spin for Leo Keefe. Darren Manning had the better start to lead out of turn one ahead of Turner, Kelvin Burt and Jason Plato. Maniason slowed suddenly and pitted to find he'd broken his transmission trying to change up to fourth gear. It was deemed terminal and he was forced to retire. Manning led from Turner, the two drawing away from Burt with Plato back in fourth place ahead of Mickle. After a rush of pit stops on lap 39, Darren Turner made his move on Darren Manning, charging by to grab the lead. From then on, Turner was able to hold Manning at bay and won by 1.39 seconds, with Burt third, 13 seconds further back. Turner has won five of the last six races. He also broke the race lap record to become the first Ascar driver to pass the 150 mile an hour barrier. We go to the famous Indianapolis Speedway in America now for NASCAR's Brickyard 400-mile race. A sellout crowd of 340,000 people turned out on the hot summer day to watch the event. But the hot and steamy conditions didn't slow some of the drivers who were the strongest in the first half of the race. Tony 
Stewart last night was very upset with his car. Almost contact between he and Bill Elliott as Elliott tried to get to the bottom of the racetrack in turn one. Those guys know they that what they have to do. They need to get to the bottom, especially on these first few laps. The bottom lane is going to be the fast lane. Tony Stewart controlled the early laps as part of a two-car duel with Bill Elliott that pulled away from the field. Right. Yeah, he was coming off a two there. But a crash on the 12th lap between Brett Bodine and Mike Wallace brought out the first yellow flag. As Bodine's car burned, the leaders pitted. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was among several drivers who did a fuel-only stop and grabbed the lead when racing resumed on lap 16. Earnhardt's time up front didn't last long as Stewart was able to pass him again by the end of the lap and stayed in front until pitting on lap 37. The top 30 cars were running on the same lap, but it was Bill Elliott who put his Dodge at the front of the field for most of the day and led 93 of the 160 laps. A late caution for debris set up a four-lap shootout to the checkered flag, but Elliott was able to pull away on the restart, and Elliott finished 1.2 seconds ahead of Rusty Wallace. It was the second victory in a row for Elliott, who won the 500-mile race at Pocono in Pennsylvania a week before. Matt Kenseth finished third, followed by rookie Ryan Newman. In a season that has been dominated by young drivers, Bill scored one for the old guys. The 46-year-old beat 45-year-old Wallace and is enjoying a NASCAR revival. He also won the Daytona 500 in 1985 and 87. The Thousand Lakes Rally is now called the Rally of Finland, but it's the home event for Scandinavian drivers like Subaru's Petter Solberg, Harry Rovenpera and the dominant Peugeot team, and four times world champ Tommy Mackinnon. Ford's Colin McRae took back-to-back -back wins in Greece and Kenya and was on the pace for a hat-trick. Championship leader Marcus Gronholm was on home soil, but not happy to be running first on the road. Nothing, uh, nothing special. It's uh, just uh, quite difficult to be first on the road, and it's uh, dry and, and loose gravel. So. We were sliding too much, so it's I can't find a good grip. Reigning world champ Richard Burns is Gronholm's teammate. Left Max long, 50 flat left plus Titans to left Max over Crest in 70. Right Max 40, slight left 100. Camber to flat left Titans maybe and in an open 60 breaking flat left minus Titans maybe long. Well, at the moment there's still a long way to go, but. I'm, I'm trying hard and, and the cars are working really well, the notes are working really well and I'm just, just concentrating like, like hell on the road. The, the, the speeds are so high that uh, if you try and do anything stupid I think you can, it's very easy to make a mistake. So the main thing for me is just to keep, keep that concentration. To left Max over crest in 70. Right Max 40, slight left 100. Camber to flat left Titans maybe and in. An open 60 breaking flat left, minus times maybe long. Overnight, Burns led a Peugeot Trio 6.2 seconds ahead of Roven Perra and 8.4 ahead of road sweeper Gronholm. Roven Perra was keen to reel in his English teammate. Gronholm won the event for the last two years but broke a shock absorber and lost time on day one. McRae was still chasing that third win. Burns suffered engine problems after this landing and incurred a 20-second penalty after a delay to fix it. Rovan Perra was boosted into the lead as a result. Carlos Sainz is one of only two non-Nordic drivers to win a World Rally in Finland. and he's more cautious over the yump, which dented Burns' lead. Subaru's Norwegian Per Solberg was best of the rest behind the Peugeots after moving into fourth place at the expense of Colin McRae. 
We ride with veteran Juha Kankanen in his Hyundai as he exited the rally on the first stage of day two. The spectator's amateur footage of the crash gives an idea of its ferocity. Ronholm picked up the pace and was taking no prisoners in his charge to the lead as his teammates faltered. This is where Gronholm learned to drive a rally car, so there's no surprise the 2000 world champion was competitive. Join him as he tackles the corner which claimed Kankunen. Watch as Rovan Perra loses his right front tyre. He cut his line a fraction too close and hit a jutting rock, which destroyed the wheel and the front suspension too, taking him out of the event. Having inherited the lead as Burns took his lateness penalty, Harry's time in the top spot was over. With Harry out, Burns moved back into a comfortable second position ahead of McRae and admitted that victory was probably out of his reach. But he had to keep up the pace to maintain his position. Ford driver McRae displaced Subaru Solberg to move into third place, but Colin ruled out any chance of catching Gronholm and Burns to claim a third consecutive win. Solberg's podium place evaporated with a puncture. Sainz kept up the pace to back up his Ford teammate and move ahead of Solberg too, although a brush with the scenery damaged a panel which was in danger of coming right off. On the penultimate day, Grunholm held a lead of one and a half minutes over Burns. On the morning of the last day, Gronholm was confident. It should be quite uh, OK, but you never know. The car has to work and uh, no mistakes, so we will see. McRae was looking safe for a third place, but he was soon to run out of luck. Solberg wasn't giving up the fight either and set off after Sainz. Burns tried to claw back some time, but Gronholm easily matched his pace stage by stage. Sainz was to lose his place to Solberg by four seconds, but the double world champ was mindful of Ford's need to drop him or McRae at the end of the season to fund the development of next year's car. But things got much, much worse for Ford in this rally. McRae and co-driver Nicky Grist were forced out by a fire in the Ford two stages from the end. The fire was caused by a fluid leaking onto the exhaust. Stop it, admit. This left Ford's hopes of a podium in the hands of Sainz, but he was unable to reel in Solberg. Up front, Gronholm produced an assured performance to end his recent poor run of form and left world champion Burns with no chance of claiming his first win of the season. The victory extends the Finns' advantage in the championship to 17 points over his nearest rival, Ford's McRae.
Burns was second, 90 seconds behind, with Solberg another 82 seconds further back. Marcus, three wins in three years, what a fantastic result. Yeah, it's, it's good. It seems to be that our car is very good and also no mistake from me in, in these three years, so it has been good. good. The tenth round of the 14 event championship is in Germany. The four-round Speedway World Cup has been held at four different venues in the UK. The first was in the rain in Sheffield between England, Germany, the Czech Republic and Australia. A heat win scores three points, two for second and one for third place. Each team could play a joker in one heat to double their score. After 16 heats, Britain led with 38 points. Australia had 31, the Czechs 19 and Germany 8. The Australians played their joker for heat 17, substituting Ryan Sullivan for Jason Lyons. Sullivan beat off a challenge from Britain's Lee Richards to score six points. The British team suffered a severe setback in Heat 19 when their star rider, Mark Lorham, crashed heavily in the appalling conditions and hit his head on a post at the start area. He was excluded from the heat, which was won by the Australians, putting them into the lead with 43 points to 41. Lauren was eventually able to walk away, but the neck brace meant he was not going to race again. Track workers tried in vain to rid the track of standing water. Heat 20 had to be restarted after another crash and saw Sean Lewis of Britain leading from Todd Wiltshire of Australia until the final lap when the Britain's bike began spluttering and he came in third and last. Wiltshire took the win and the points for Australia. The devastated Lewis tried scooting his bike over the line. The heavy rain and delays to replace safety fencing after several crashes have put the entire race meeting well behind schedule. Wilcher's win was enough to clinch an Australian victory as officials met after Heat 20 and declared the meeting over because of the dangerous conditions. Australian supporters always seem to have a flag on hand. The final score was Australia 46 points, Britain 42, the Czech Republic 28 and Germany just 9. Australia go through to the finals and Germany was eliminated. Todd Wiltshire was shown his team's appreciation for his efforts. In the second round of pool, the Swedes, Tony Rickardson, Mikael Carlsen, Peter Carlsen and Niklas Klingberg dominated from the opening heat, but the Danes had a dreadful start with early leader Nicky Pedersen crashing out. The race was stopped as Pedersen lay on the track for several minutes, but eventually he got to his feet and walked away. The Speedway World Cup started last year to replace the World Team Championship. The Team Cup began in 1960, but crowds declined and the World Pairs were much more popular. With seven teams in each round, it attracted more supporters and made for real team racing, so they were merged. The new competition evolved and became unpopular with major nations who felt the format was no longer a true team championship and three teams withdrew in 1997. The new World Cup reaches a final tournament which has five meetings held over a week. The top team in each round goes into the final with each runner-up and the two best scoring losers meeting in a last chance round from where the top two teams also go into the final. Each qualifying round has four teams of five riders, while the final has five teams of five riders. Points scored over all heats determine the final placings, and where there's a tie, each team picks a rider for a runoff.
In the second round, four times world champ Rickardson won full points as the Swedes scored 55 to Denmark's 41. Finland were third with 32 and Hungary last on 19. The third round was at Eastbourne between Poland, Russia, the United States and Slovenia. In a dramatic evening, a spectator suffered a head injury when Russian Sergei Kusin crashed through a barrier into the spectator's area in the fourth heat. Sergei escaped unharmed and the youngster involved suffered only minor injuries. With Poland and the USA dominating the evening, the Poles' hardest-fought victory came in the closing race of the night, with Jaroslav Hampel overtaking and then defeating Greg Hancock of the USA in a thrilling battle. Poland won with a score of 57 points to qualify for the final, ahead of the Americans who scored 49, with Russia third on 24 and Slovenia fourth on 19. Poland earned the right to race against Australia and Sweden in the final, with Denmark and the Czech Republic coming through in a race-off. At the final round in Peterborough, the Australians moved ahead on the muddy track with a heat win by Ryan Sullivan and were never again headed. Riders found the unusual number of five bikes on the track meant that they had to be extra careful in the turns, and Sweden's chances of beating the Australians crashed out with Stefan Andersson in Heat 19. The race was stopped while medics and marshals cleared Andersson and his bike. In the replay, it's clear a brave passing move caused the fall on the sticky surface, and Andersson suffered no serious injuries. By the penultimate heat, Australia needed third or better to win the championship, and Lee Adams stayed out of trouble to do exactly that, and then Jason Crump sealed the victory by winning Heat 25, the final race. Denmark took a surprise second place after languishing in last place. Bjarne Pedersen excelled, top scoring with 20 points. Sweden, led by world champ Rickardsen, had to be content with third place after Andersen crashed, while Poland blew their chances when Tomasz Golob could only manage fourth while playing his team's joker. Australia won on 64 points, Denmark finished on 58, Sweden on 54, Poland had 48, and the Czech Republic ended on 36. We'll end this week on that muddy and exhausting note. But so you stay on track and up to speed, make sure you catch next week's Drive.